So with the upcoming release of Godzilla v Kong A New Empire, a movie that has probably already been released to the public by now, so honestly, I can only hope and pray that that movie isn't total poop on a screen, pretty much making the entirety of this video pretty redundant and a waste of time. But let's be real here for a moment, because while the idea of the cinematic universe and the success that one can bring to your studio, not only financially, but commercially and socially, is nothing short of an extreme boost in every single facet when it comes to this industry. That's a given. The majority of sentient people could more than likely already put those two and two together. What's more of an interesting point is that while the internet, and specifically this platform, would have you believe that the trope and idea that has become the cinematic universe has become an overused, overattempted, and frankly unwelcome subgenre into the landscape of Hollywood, that is simply not the case. And don't get me wrong, while this is not a video discussing the double-edged sword that the idea of a cinematic universe could be for your studio, the amount that have actually been attempted could really be counted on one hand, let alone the attempts that could even get their tiny little cinematic feet off the ground, or the ones that have succeeded. Which at this point, I would say the majority of people would only consider the MCU as Hollywood's only and most successful attempt at such a feat. Which even for all of the MCU's pitfalls now, and seemingly a new rebrand the studio is trying to undergo with the future introduction of the Fantastic Four and the slate of characters that the X-Men franchise comes with, was still nothing short of the greatest cinematic achievement of all time with the handling and conclusion of the Infinity Saga. My point is, while the superhero genre was taking a chokehold on the world and pretty much deriving Hollywood of its oxygen supply to the brain, creating the vegetable of forever escaping creativity that Hollywood seems to be in now, Godzilla, Kong, Warner Brothers, and the now-deemed Monsterverse were paving the path and setting themselves up for a future success that they could have never saw coming. Not including Godzilla v Kong and New Empire, even though you could more than likely probably just throw this movie into what I'm about to say. In the decade the idea of the Monsterverse has been around, it's not hard to say that the universe has garnered a reputation much like the Fast and Furious franchise. Another franchise that you could say in a way, be considered a cinematic universe with the inclusion of the movie Hobbs and Shaw. Don't think about it too much. And you very much mirror that mindset when entering the theater, popcorn in hand, and ready to watch a Monsterverse movie. Films that leave nothing to the imagination, and that's a good thing. An idea and franchise that was ready to push itself as far as the audience would allow. And to put it frankly, a series of movies where you knew exactly what you were going to get when spending a quarter of your paycheck on an IMAX seat. Totaling five movies, two iconic and legendary main characters, and almost two billion dollars in box office revenue later, it's not hard to see why the idea has continued to chug along, even as the Hollywood climate, Hollywood landscape, and Hollywood ideals have drastically changed and fallen apart around it. And while franchises like the Star Wars universe have now technically become a cinematic universe under their new ruler of Disney, would you really have the confidence to look at me dead in the comments and claim that the Star Wars brand is feeling successful in the moment? I couldn't. Well, financially for sure. And if long-term success isn't your name of the game, then you would more than likely consider the Star Wars Cinematic Universe a great success. But when you take the time to look at the returns on their Disney Plus shows, or say the general discourse when it comes to new releases in the Disney era, the numbers and landscape paint a much different picture. Or take the time to look at the mild success of the Hobbit trilogy's inclusion into the Lord of the Rings universe. Again, while successful financially, I wouldn't say that it brought much to the franchise or studio in terms of the fan relationship to the brand. Just take a look at the numbers or ratings for the Rings of Power. The same could be said for the Magical Beast or... Fan... I think it is the Fantastic Beast trilogy. I... I'm... We're gonna go with that. I know it's one of those two names set in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. A trilogy that I wouldn't even say tasted the same success as the Hobbit trilogy while receiving an equal amount of backlash. And we don't have to discuss Warner Brothers failed attempt at the Snyderverse and the embarrassing conclusion that that all came to. But second chances are always welcomed in my eyes and I guess we'll just see how that whole scenario plays out next year when we enter the James Gunn vision. But what does this actually say about the current state of the audience's studio relationship that I continue to bring up? 
While it's relatively obvious and has been a growing problem in the community that Hollywood has no idea what its general audiences even want, doesn't the fact that Giant Lizard teaming up with Giant Monkey to fight Evil Giant Lizard or Evil Giant Monkey speak volumes to Hollywood? Because what I take away from that statement is an ideal that I don't think has ever really changed in Hollywood when it comes to the audience's side of the bargain and what the audience is looking for. It's not hard to see that the audience is simply looking for escapism. No way! Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Rather, that comes in the form of a melodramatic and grounded biopic, an epic sci-fi space odyssey, a feminist flick made around one of America's most popular toys, a cinematic version of a world that lives only in our video games, a guy willing to take down the world over the death of a dog, sentient robots fighting other sentient robots, pirates sailing across the seas, superheroes saving the day, and yes, even giant lizards and giant monkeys teaming up to level cities half populations and beat different variations of themselves. That side of the audience has never changed. And while I have no idea how long they can really keep this simple of a premise really going for, especially with this new release of a new empire and the early discourse surrounding the film. Oh, never mind. I'm actually going to see this movie tonight. I think this video releases on Sunday, so yeah, that should all line up. So I'm going to see it on Sunday, tonight, whenever you're watching this video, but man, that's a lot of money. Well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't take away that the fact that the MonsterVerse has low-key become Hollywood's second most successful cinematic universe behind the Titan that is the MCU. You like that, huh? Which I can pretty confidently say wasn't on anybody's bingo card when the first Godzilla movie hit theaters a decade ago. And honestly, I just feel like an achievement such as this deserved a little moment in the spotlight. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.